So what we have in this problem is a rod and its axis of rotation is this. And then there's a block of 50 grams which slides down this plane and hits the rod over here. And then the rod and this block stick together and travel up a distance, capital H. Now, the mass of the rod is given, the length of the rod is given, the mass of the block is given, and the height from which it starts to slide is also given. So what we have to find is, what is angle theta naught when the block and the rod reach the maximum height? So how we'll approach this problem is step one, we, we will see that what is the potential energy of this block and how it gets converted into kinetic energy. So we can say that MGH, which is the potential energy of the block, is equal to half mv square, which is the kinetic energy of the block when it just about hits the rod. And from this consideration, we can say that velocity of the block is equal to under root 2gh. Now, we can also say if the angular momentum is conserved, then the angular momentum of the block before it hits and the angular momentum of the rod block system should be equal. So we know that the angular momentum of the block before it hits, just before it hits the rod, would be given as m into v into d, where d is the length of the rod or 40 centimeters. And this angular momentum has been measured about the axis of rotation, which is O. And this should equal to the angular momentum of the block and the rod system after the collision, which should equal I omega, where I is a moment of energy of the block rod system. So moment of energy of the block rod system would be I rod plus M D square, where M is the mass of the block and this multiplied by the angular velocity after the collision. So we know that the I rod is nothing but equal to 1 12th MD square, where M is the mass of the rod, plus M into D upon 2 whole square. So we've just used a parallel axis theorem. We know what is the moment of inertia of this rod about the center, and then we've added the distance of the axis of rotation from the center of mass and squared it to find the moment of energy of the rod about this as the axis. So if we do this, what we find is that this equals one third MD square. So if we go ahead and substitute one third of MD square for I rod and V, which is equal to under root two GH over here, what you'll find is omega equals md into under root 2gh divided by capital md square upon 3 plus md square. So this therefore means that the block rod system would gain kinetic energy because it has omega and its kinetic energy would be half i omega square. So this kinetic energy of the rod block system would then convert into the potential energy of the block and the rod system when it reaches a height capital H. So we can say that the kinetic energy when the block rod system starts moving up is equal to half I rod plus MD square. So this combined is the moment of inertia of the system into omega square should equal to the potential energy of the block at its highest point, which is nothing but mgh. And you would notice that the center of mass of the rod would therefore go up by a height h by 2. So the potential energy gained by the rod would be mgh upon 2. So this is something which you'll have to kind of comprehend that the center of the mass of the rod would go up by h by 2 if the rod, the bottom of the rod goes up by h. So I'll repeat what I've done over here is that I found the kinetic energy of the block rod system at its lowest point and I've equated it with the potential energy of the system at its highest point or at height h. And mgh is nothing but the potential energy of this block and mgh by 2, this expression is a potential energy of the rod. And from 
pure trigonometry, you can find that h is nothing but d into 1 minus cos theta. So maybe we can do a quick derivation over here, how we got this. So you can see that the rod at its highest point is this. And this is, if this is h, then this is d minus h. And if this is theta, and this is also d, then you can see that cos theta is equal to base upon the hypotenuse and what you'll get is h is equal to d into 1 minus cos theta. So if we substitute the value of h over here as d into 1 minus cos theta and i rod as 1 third md square and then we substitute all the variables which are known actually what you'll find is that theta equals 32 degrees so there's a bit of calculation required between this step and this step essentially you have to substitute one third md square over here and d into one minus cos theta over here and then solve the whole equation and you'll find theta is equal to 32 degrees. So while we've got the answer over here, what's more important is to understand how this problem has been solved. So once again, I'll recapitulate how we've approached this problem to get this answer. So we have taken this block and we, we realize that it has a certain potential energy which gets converted into kinetic energy when it hits the rod. So from that consideration, we found the velocity of the block when it hit the rod. Then we have considered the law of conservation of angular momentum and said that the angular momentum of the block before it hit should equal to the angular momentum of the block and the rod system. And we've used this equation over here to find the value of omega. And once again, we've said that since the system possessed omega, it possessed a certain kinetic energy. The system possessed a certain kinetic energy, which then again gets converted into potential energy as the system moves up. And once again, we've used the uh, law of conservation of energy to equate the kinetic energy with the potential energy gained by the mass and the rod. And we finally found theta by substituting the values uh, V over here and omega over here into this equation.